It's Pete from Geek Talk, where we expose the stories behind top startups. I'm here today with Neil Capel and Ian White from Sailthrough. And we're going to talk about um, the story behind Sailthrough and how these guys got started. Thanks, guys. Sure. Great to be here. So um, you're both engineers. Um, tell me a little bit more about what we were doing before Sailthrough. Well, we met probably eight years ago at this point. Yeah. Uh, Neil was CTO of a company called Money Media, and uh, I was an engineer that, that he hired there. And uh, we liked working together, and we worked together on a few different projects before we started Sailthrough. Yeah, I think I'd have to say it's a very loose definition to call me an engineer these days. <laughs> so how did you know it was time to start your own, com your own company? Like, when, was that, when did that realization dawn on you? You know, part of what drove the initial idea was actually, you know, some frustrations we'd had with using some of the different services, yeah. different APIs, and, and, and things that were out there. You know, I'd done a lot of redevelopments over the time, yeah. and every single one I'd kind of wanted to put the marketing in control of their own efforts and been like, okay, and give them the service that they needed so that engineering could be freed up for other stuff. Uh, and it was none of, them, none of them could handle what we wanted to do, none of them did what they needed to be doing, none of them really focused on the end user either. And how would you say your engineering perspectives um, affected the early versions of the product? I mean, it was definitely the first version of the product. The first thing that we hacked together was, you know, started with an API. It started like, yeah. let's make a simple, you know, powerful API that developers, you know, CTOs will want to use. So like, you know, in the, in the initial stages, it was like, let's, let's get our like tech friends to use this service, you know, because a simple integration, like, you know, half a day of development and they can turn everything over to their marketing team. That's like a big win for a lot of people. Yeah. And what are some memorable interactions between you two guys, like in those early days? <laughs> what, what, what were your respective roles? Like who was doing what? I wasn't doing any coding whatsoever, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, I was essentially the, you know, the lead developer yeah. and, you know, Neil was, you know, both system uh, admin both and sales. Both systems <laughs> admin and sales, exactly. That's about it, really. You know, uh, and there was, there was sort of shared, you know, product design going on. We'd kick, we'd kick ideas yeah. back and forth yeah. and, you know, try to, try to make things a reality, try to, you know, we'd both be meeting with customers and so on directly and trying to turn around those conversations directly into something yeah. that we would build. We did, a lot of, we did a lot of custom sort of requests as it were, but mo only if they, always, and still to this day, only if they stayed online with where we were going with it. Right. Um, occasionally we do, you know, go off topic a little bit, but we really kept to it. And so we would turn around stuff for people very, very quickly, normally because we'd kind of, you know, take the shortest route and go in there and, and give them what they needed to do. So, the split between sales and SA, um, I mean, that's humorous, but I guess we all know that everyone does everything yeah, yeah. early on in any startup, right? Um, any other memorable stories about sort of the early days um, of sale through? I mean, you know, a lot of those early days were just about, you know, alerts and problems that yeah. we would, you know, fix in the nick of time. I mean, we'd have that experience of, actually like waking up in the middle of the night oh, yeah. right before the alert goes yeah. off. Like first Neil had this, yeah. and then after I went on the alerts, I started having the same, the same experience. I don't know whether it was some kind of like, you know, telepathic communion with the system. Yeah, or the SA premonition. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. SA uh, premonition for sure. It totally woke you up just before, and you'd be like, yeah. and suddenly the alert would go off. And you're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, what were some of the challenges um, early on? Like what were your biggest challenges? as you started to like onboard customers and you were building stuff and you know the team's small from a technical perspective you know it, we had a rapidly evolving product with really we were trying out all kinds of different yeah. ideas different different features you know uh, really it was a moving target so trying to keep things sort of flexible and as as simple as possible and at the same time scaling and you know, yeah. dealing with uh, you know, bringing on more and more customers and supporting the load, you know, sometimes those things can be can be in tension with each other. You know, you don't necessarily want to prematurely optimize against a, a particular use case that might actually change three months down the road. You know, now we have a lot more resources and we're a lot more sort of disciplined or methodical about how 
you know changes to the product take place. Mm -hmm. But back then in the in the early days, you know, it was sort of the wild west juggling yeah, sure. juggling it all um, in our heads. We didn't have many servers. Yeah, uh, we ran you. the whole thing on one box for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, we, did. we actually only Where just was the box. Uh, Under your bed? <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't a colo. Thankfully. It was. It was in a colo. But, it was. It, it was. It was just one smoke box that yeah. was smoking. I would think from the time. <laughs> time. When it was when it was decommissioned, we should have brought it in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't. It we should only, be in the office with like a flag in it or something. I don't know. <laughs> we only decommissioned it like a year, year and a half yeah. ago. It yeah. was still like sending mail for us. Like you know, it was just a mail server yeah, for point, for a yeah. little while. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know what happened to that box. We really should bring it and mount it on is. the wall. <laughs> I mean, it was the other thing as well that we went from, you know, early days of really, I mean, I was a MySQL diehard, you know, and we went from early days of, you know, being, trying to horizontally scale a MySQL side of it. Uh, and that was when a lot more of the document oriented databases were coming out and everything was happening. So it was, we, you know, we moved up, we were one of the early uh, converts, um, but you know, so to Mongo, learning. right? To yeah. Mongo, yeah. yeah. What would you say the engineering culture is like here? I think everybody here really believes in the product that we have. I think everybody, you know, responds to the fact that so many different clients are using our product, they're, you know, integrating with our API, building cool things on top of our own language, you know. That's, that's exciting for people, and I, I think people go to work every day, yeah. like, excited to build on top of, like, build a platform that people are building on top of. Uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time as a team, you know, not just in the office, but out of the office, you know, because we, we genuinely like and respect each other, and, and it's, it's just one of the most fun and unique crew of people that I've ever met in my life. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, it's a hard-working environment. Um, but at the same time, the uh, you know the whole culture of sail through as the entire company is really that you know life is too short to not like your colleagues. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, you've really got to get along, and, and as Ian says, we we'll go through you know the tough and the fun parts. But it, it, we, they, everyone hangs out. I mean, yeah. you know, it's a good. We really do have sort of a no assholes culture. I think. <laughs> That's you right. Know, I would agree with that. <laughs> Yeah. What about like as the company scaled? Um, one thing that I do with career coaching with engineers is teach them about um, leadership skills. Like, how do you feel about managing a team, and how did you learn? Like, what are your best tips to engineers out there who might be interested in moving into positions of leadership? Because you know a lot of us engineers aren't always great at that sort of stuff by nature. Any thoughts there? Yeah. Engineers, one, I mean, the thing I would say is they've got to decide what they want to be, whether they yeah. want to be a manager or they want to be an engineer, and purely in engineering. And, and I think they should make that public, you know, to their, mm -hmm. in, in, in their environment, because it's, uh, it tends to be people will sort of, as you grow through your career, put you in management. And if you don't want to be in it, that's absolutely fine and needs to be said. Um, because, you know, otherwise people will start to position you. And, 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 and managers at other companies will start to position people into those positions. And because the engineer doesn't want to lose their job, they're kind of like, okay, I'll go along with it. Uh, but if you don't want to be in that field, you're not going to be successful at it. So you've got to know what you want to be and actually make sure that you follow that path. Because if you're following the wrong path, you're not set up for success. Mm -hmm. It's like we make sure that we know uh, our engineers, if they want to be a manager, and if they don't want to be a manager, then we'll, we'll make sure that we can you know, reward them and, and compensate them differently, but also have the management come in. Um, the other thing I would say is that, you know, uh, coaches are brilliant. I mean, having management training, coaching, all kinds of aspects is, you know, is a part of uh, human growth and I think that needs to happen for, for everyone. If you want to continue to, you know, evolve and be better at what you do, then, you know, getting advice from people is the best thing you can do. Yep. Cool. Well, best of luck. Um, can't wait to see where the company goes. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've met your engineers. They're awesome. So, um, you know. I'm, you guys have built a great team and excited to see where it goes. Nice. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much.